Hey everybody, this is Michael Pernay Isbell. I'm making a series of videos where I'm using Tinderbox to analyze um, sections of the Apple Swift book in preparation for writing my own uh, condensed Swift book. Um, and uh, uh, here I'm talking through the diagrams and talking about things I've picked up and learned about various parts of Swift. This is about optional chaining. Um, so it's a process for querying and calling properties, methods, and subscripts on an optional that might currently be nil. So in other words, so when you put a question mark after a variable, uh, obviously it's an optional. That means that it has a value or doesn't have a value and it's wrapped. Um, you can uh, perform tests on these or include them in, in um, uh, on, on uh, properties of instances, for example, in order to test if the value implicitly, if the value exists or is nil. So for example, if you have residence dot address equal residence question mark dot address equal some value, address will be set only if residence contains an actual instance and isn't nil. Okay, so um, if an optional contains a value, the call succeeds. If an optional is nil, it returns nil, obviously. On multiples chained together, you can chain together um, in an if let statement or in a, uh, a series of properties which drill down into a, a similar to uh, key values, um, key value chaining in Objective C or in the API. Um, you can drill down and uh, the entire chain will fail gracefully if even one of them is nil. Um, it's similar to um, messaging a uh, nil in Objective-C, nothing will happen. Um, of course, no, you're only guaranteed for nothing to happen at that point. Probably a crash will be coming very shortly thereafter because an object is expected and one doesn't exist. Um, this addresses the entire problem of how do you handle um, uh, branching when uh, an, a value and nil um, are obviously two very different kinds of data in Objective-C, so you have to branch and, and deal with each of them differently. By having an optional in uh, Swift that handles that automatically, you're saving yourself writing a lot of code and you're improving code safety as well. It's actually one of the main reasons that exception handling doesn't happen in Swift and, and probably never will. Um, and it works, the difference between uh, uh, Swift and Objective-C and messaging a nil is that it works for any type in Swift and can be checked for success or failure implicitly. Um, so if we move on here, here's an example. If let room count equals John dot residence question mark dot number of rooms, residence is an optional. If it residence exists, the number of rooms will be set to room count, or room count will be sent to number, number of rooms. If residence is nil, room count will be set to nil. Um, and I know here, room count will be an int, an optional int. That is not true. Um, the book is a little misleading. It seems to imply that it will always be an optional, even if number of rooms is not an optional. It says room count will always be an optional as a result. That is not the case. Um, uh, it will be uh, always an optional if it's a standalone statement. That is, let room count equal, etc. When you put it in an if let, the if let structure automatically, in fact, this still does return an optional, but the if let structure unwraps the optional and sets the room count to the value either nil or the value of the of the uh, uh, the variable here, and it is not an optional. So there you go. Uh, yes. You specify optional chaining by placing a question mark after an optional value, and you can place it after a method, after the parentheses, after a property, right after the variable name, or after a subscript, 
right after the prices. Uh, it's similar to placing an AND after an optional uh, or an ampersand after an optional value to force the unwrapping. The main difference is with optional chaining, you get graceful fails. Um, forced unwrapping uh, with, an, uh, with an exclamation point triggers a runtime error when the optional is nil and you try to use the nil. Um, if you have a person instance with a nil residence property, for instance, residence exclamation point crashes the app when it tries to use a nil. Residence question mark, the op, you know, just unwraps the nil. Um, result of an optional chaining call is always an optional value, except in the condition that I just showed. So that's what this is talking about here. Uh, four model classes are implemented in the book. Person contains a residence. Residence contains room, multiple rooms in an array. Uh, residence uh, uh, is a uh, 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 subscripted, so I'll show you how that works, um, to contain the, the array of rooms. An address is an instance also assigned to residence. So a residence has an address and it has a number of rooms. Note, number of rooms is a computed property, not a stored property. Um, so it's returning a count property from the rooms array, and it also provides a read-write subscript property, so we'll get to look at that. Accessing properties through optional chaining. That's what this looks like right here. So you're accessing a property, number of rooms, and you're doing a test here. One of these branches will run dependent upon whether the residence tests. Very simple, clean code. You can also try and set a property using an optional value. So the optional can be on the left-hand side of the equation as well. And here's an example of that right there. Right. Uh, calling methods through optional chaining. You can do that. The question mark always follows the parentheses for the method. The method does not need to declare a return value, as we know, and there I'm, I'm talking about it right here. Uh, functions and methods with no return type have a default return type of void. So they return a value of uh, an empty parentheses, that is, it's an empty tuple. Um, so an optional value of void question mark will be returned as the type. And I know again return types are always an optional type. I beat this point to the ground because the book did <laughs> and it turns out it's not always true. If it's an if, -let, if let it's not true. It gets unwrapped. So you can use an if statement to call the method with optional chaining. Also attempting to set a property on a null instance through optional chaining returns a void. To be expected, right? Um, accessing subscripts through optional chaining. Uh, just to see what that looks like here. So for example, John residence name. Um, so we're expecting residence to be um, here. If it is here, then it will use the subscript to reach out and get the first room and get the name of the room. So room has, let me see if I have the classes here. Maybe here. Yes, this is what a room looks like. So room has a name. So I have an issue with subscript syntax. So I think it can be awfully opaque and not clear about what's going on. You know, when you're looking at this, you don't see the word room anywhere. So how do you know what name is associated with? But as a matter of fact, that is the way it works. So it'll do that test. Um, here you see assigning a room to a residence, assuming the residence exists, and this won't, it'll just fail gracefully if residence doesn't exist, right? Um, and it's assigning it to the rooms array via the subscript. It's assigning it to the zero position on the rooms array, as a matter of fact. Um, here you can see we're appending directly to the rooms array on a residence that we create. And then once we add that residence, the point is in the book we're doing that test again, and this time it works, right? Um, so you can access subscripts of optional type also. So the subscript, so before the subscript was a numeral, the subscript here can be an optional type, and you'll see this, the subscript 
uh, the optional mark on the subscript comes right after the braces. So this, so we're dealing with a multi-dimensional array. The second dimension of the array and this attempt to set it will only be accessed if in fact there's a Dave entry. In this case there's no Brian entry so this will never happen and it will fail gracefully. Okay. Uh, you can link together multiple levels of optional chaining to drill down. And here's an example of that. It just shows right here, actually. If uh, John dot residence question mark dot address question mark dot street, um, and so it's going to only work if all of these are present. If residence isn't there, there won't be any address. If residence is there and address isn't there, it won't work. It'll fail gracefully. Um, here we're assigning John's address to uh, an address pointer on residence. We're unpacking, we're implicitly unwrapping the optional residence to make it available for the assignation. To access address and assign it to it, you have to unwrap the residence here. I actually went and tried it, and there seemed to be some complications around that. I tried it with uh, a question mark here instead of an exclamation point, and it still seemed to work. Um, it compiled. I haven't tested it in code to see what the actual result was, so I'm going to go back and do that. Um, note that when you use multiple optionals, that does not add more levels of quote optionality unquote to the return value. So in other words, if, you type, if the type you're trying to retrieve is a non-optional, it will still return an optional. If the type you're trying to retrieve is optional already, it won't become optional times two. It just doesn't work that way. It just simply returns an optional. Okay. Um, and finally, chaining on methods with optional return values. You can also use optional chaining to call a method in the chain on the optional return value if you need to. Uh, you place a question mark after the parenthesis, methods parentheses indicates your chaining on the methods return value. So in other words, if you have a uh, um, a method returning an object and then you get a property from the method afterwards and you have a question mark on the method it's a putting a it's a testing the return value of the method or it's the the optional refers to the return value of the method that's what it's marking is optional not the actual method itself so when you're marking uh, marking it you're um, in, fact, in effect saying wrap the return value of that method no matter what in an optional so that I can so that it can I can take advantage of the implicit testing and if need be it can fail gracefully and that's those are my remarks uh, on optional chaining at this point